So what are the best all mountain skis for this season? I was lucky enough to ski a bunch of them and there are some fantastic options available. For complete transparency, I am not sponsored or paid by any of these brands and I'm no longer a sponsored skier, so all these reviews are based on my own opinion. I'm making them purely for you guys, so thank you for being part of the community. Let's get started. Now, the all mountain category is one of the hardest for manufacturers to get right because these skis have to be able to blast around through the powder off piste, but yet they still have to be able to perform on the piste and crank out a decent carve. So it's a tough ski to get right, but they've done some amazing work this year and there's some great options. To choose the right all mountain ski is up to you. You have to decide what sort of ski you want. And to do that, you need to look at where you ski most. Do you prefer piste? If so, you want to get a ski in around an 80 to 85, 86 sort of width underfoot. That's the waist of the ski under where the binding is. If you ski more off piste, you want something that's a little bit wider underfoot, maybe a 90 to 95 millimeter. Uh, which would give you just a little bit more float when you're off piste. So what skis impress me the most? Well, I'm a bigger guy, so I like a stiffer ski that I can really push into. But with all of these skis, I tried to ski them gentle and hard so I could find out exactly where the skis fit. Okay, let's start with the Rosinol Sender 94 Ti. Now this is a ski that I was a bit nervous about because in the past, Rosignol skis have skied softer for me. Again, being a bigger skier, I found that I could push beyond what they would give back. However, I'm delighted to say that the TI, or the Titan or Sheet, in this ski has helped stiffen it up and make it a load of fun. So on piste, cranking out the turns, it didn't wash out, even though I was a bit apprehensive kind of waiting for it. It was a good ski and it was a load of fun. It's got a slightly thinner wood core because they've used that Titan or sheet, which makes it a lighter ski. But I would be slightly nervous about the longevity of it. How is it going to perform over years? However, being lighter does make it a great option for a lighter, smaller skier or someone who's skiing it a bit more gentle. It's a nice looking ski. I like that graphic. That's... Huh? Graphic? Nice? You like? The Scott Pure Free 90. Now this is a new ski from Scott, but they've been making great all mountain skis for a long time, including that one ski, which they used to have. This is no different. It's a great all mountain ski. It's slightly narrow underfoot at 90, but it's still extremely capable and a load of fun. On the piste, you can push into it and it's quite lively and pops back and is ready to go into the next turn. And off piece, it floats away with the best of them. If you're into muted graphics, and real subtle styling, then this might be the ski for you. Looks cool. I like being able to see the wood core. I think that's kind of a nice touch. The pure free 90 will deliver. Again, being 90 underfoot. Oh, we've had my goggles on the whole time. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? Next up, the Blizzard Rustler 9. It's 96 underfoot, so it's the widest ski in this category that I skied. So unsurprisingly, it floats well off piste in the powder, but it also cruises around the whole mountain happily. I would call this a fun ski. You can throw anything at it from powder, bumps, crud, little side hits, and it'll keep you grinning all day long. It's a very accessible ski because of that. So I'd happily recommend this ski for strong intermediate skiers right up to expert skiers looking for a nice cruisy all mountain ski. Send it. The Headcore 93. At 93 underfoot, pretty much puts this in the sweet spot for an all mountain ski. It's got a new construction this year which makes it lighter than before but it's still a good, strong, dependable ski, especially for advanced expert skiers looking for that one ski that can do it all. So if you've skied the head core before and you like the experience, then this one's just like catching up with an old friend who's had a haircut. The Elan Ripstick 88. This ski's been around for about four years and it just keeps getting better. This year, it's even lighter. They've added more carbon, 
but the dampening in it means that it doesn't chatter at all on piste. It's an incredibly playful, fun and exciting ski and the amount of tech in this thing is insane. I'm not going to go into it too much in this review because this review is about feel, but if you want me to do a full detailed in-depth review on this ski, just shout out in the comments below. These skis are asymmetrical, which means that the profile and the construction of the ski are designed specifically for the correct foot. So that means you have to wear them on the right feet. Fortunately, there's a left and right label, which makes it easy to get them the right way around. For me, coming from a free ride background, I love being off piste. So I found the 88 slightly too narrow in the crud and in the powder. However, Elan do the Ripstick 96, which is slightly wider underfoot and gives you that little bit more float when you're in the powder in the off piece. The ski is more lively and playful than any of the others that I skied in this group. So if you like a dynamic, active skiing experience, then this is the one for you. Oh, that one. <laughs> I thought it was the one before. The Nordica Enforcer 94. Now this ski is probably the most advanced and capable ski in the whole group. But that means you need to be on it. You need to be technically strong enough to push into this ski all day long. It doesn't like passengers, it likes you to be part of the fun. The ski comes in three different widths and I think the 94 is pretty much perfect for an all mountain ski. If you get it over and onto an edge, and stand off it, it really carves through the cord, but yet it is able to float through the powder with ease. It loves beating up crud snow where you can drive through pretty much anything. I mean, I even took this ski beyond its limits, its theoretical limits, into the freeride domain and it absolutely loved it. We dropped off a few small rocks and I'm not gonna say cliffs, but uh, it stomped. The tail, the back end of the ski is strong and dependable and reliable. It's a really confidence inspiring ski if you're willing to be on it. A lighter skier or a less advanced skier might find this ski a bit too much for a whole day, which would give you tired legs and such. Whereas another ski in this group would fit perfectly. This ski is a strong ski aimed at performance and it delivers. So if you're a strong technical skier looking for a ski that can keep up, then I think Nordica have given you something to think about. It gets the naughty one thumbs up. Let's sum it all up then. The Rosie Sender 94 Ti. This is a great option, especially I would say for lighter skiers. The Blizzard Rustler 9. This is a cruisy accessible ski that I would see suiting the vast majority of skiers out there. The Head Core 93. Again, a very dependable one ski wonder. The Scott Pure Free 90. This is a more dynamic ski that would suit an advanced expert skier looking for an all day, all mountain ski experience. The Elan Ripstick 88. A very lively and playful ski, especially on piste. If you want the off-piste version, go for the 96. The Nordica Enforcer 94, a high-performance charging ski, even in the freeride terrain, perfect for an advanced expert skier. For me, it's been a great group of skis and I've enjoyed all of them. The one I'd probably take away with me is the Nordica Enforcer 94, just because of its capabilities off-piste. However, if I just wanted a cruisy or mountain ski, say for ski instructing or something, the Scott Pure Free or the Ripstick, especially in the 96, would be a great go-to choice. That's it for now. Don't forget to like and subscribe, because we love you. Um, okay, I think that'll do for now. We're gonna display about all the skis not being there. Cut.